Good evening kids, it's good to see you again. I hope that you guys are doing well and that you're having a good week. Thank you again for coming to watch another video lesson. I hope you enjoyed the first one and if you guys have any comments or suggestions, just let your parents know those and they can share that with us and we can change these videos for the future um, so that you continue to learn about the Bible and enjoy them. I hope that you guys had a great Palm Sunday. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson we put up and that you got to celebrate with your family and do worship alongside of them. And today we're going to continue talking about um, the Easter story at large, so what led up to Jesus dying on the cross. And that's what our story is going to continue on that path today. Again, today I'm going to be reading today's Bible story from a children's Bible. So if you'd like to read or follow along with a more in-depth version, you can grab your Bible or find one online. We'll be reading from Matthew, which is in the New Testament, chapter 26. I also wanted to let you know that there is an attachment if you're watching this video on our website, which is prairiecenterscgp.org. There's an attachment with this video that you can download and it's a notes page for you to follow along with this lesson. So you can write down about what you're learning and you can draw pictures, whatever you'd like. So if you're interested in that, just let your parents know and they can help you download that notes form. So like I said, we learned about Palm Sunday, which was Jesus's entrance into Jerusalem on Sunday. And the story we're gonna be reading about today took place just a few days after. And you're gonna see Jesus and his friends are celebrating the Passover feast. Now, if you wanna learn about more about the Passover feast, I'm not gonna go over it in today's video, but you can read um, Exodus 12, a children's story from Exodus 12, and learn about why the Jewish people celebrated Passover. Do you all remember the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet? That also happened right before this story, right before what we're about to read. And if we were at church today, we would be celebrating that as well. If you've been at our church for a year or more, you would know that we um, participate in feet washing on the Wednesday before Easter to celebrate what Jesus did for his disciples. So let's go ahead and get on into the story. I'll put the pictures up on the screen as well so you can follow along. The Last Supper. Judas, one of Jesus' friends, had a bad idea. He knew that the leaders were angry with Jesus. Do you remember why the leaders were angry with Jesus? In our last story on Sunday, we read about how they were angry because the people were following Jesus now and not them. So this is what they're going to do because they feel that way about Jesus. He knew they wanted to catch Jesus. Now Judas wanted money more than anything. So he told the leaders that he would show them where Jesus was if they would pay him some money. They paid him 30 pieces of silver. One night, Jesus and his friends were eating supper together. This is the Passover feast. One of you is planning to do something bad to me, Jesus said. Who is it? asked John. Jesus said, it is the one I give bread to. Then he gave a piece of bread to Judas. Go on, Jesus told him, do what you're planning to do. Judas got up and left. Only Judas and Jesus knew what Judas's bad idea was. Then Jesus gave thanks and broke some bread. He shared it with his friends. Next, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks. He shared this with his friends too. Whenever you eat the bread and drink the wine, remember me, he said. Then Jesus said, I will not be with you much longer. I have to leave, but do not worry. Do not be afraid. I will come back. You are my friends. Love each other as I love you. So we see in this story that Jesus knew that he was going to die. We talked about when he was entering Jerusalem, he even knew then that his time to die was coming soon. And in this story, he already knew that Judas was going to betray him, and he showed that to Judas at dinner. We also saw that he was telling his 12 disciples not to fear and not to worry, because even though he was going to be leaving soon, he would be back again. Did you catch what he instructed them to do? 
he told them to continue to love each other and to love others the way that Jesus showed them how to. Was there anything that Jesus did in this story that you're familiar with? You might have been familiar with the way that Jesus broke bread and drank wine and how he instructed the disciples to do so. We still celebrate this today, the adults at our church do anyway, and it's called communion. We break unleavened bread, which is kind of like a thin cracker, and juice, and we celebrate this in the same way that the disciples did with Jesus. And do you remember what he said when he talked about breaking the bread and drinking the wine? He said to do this in remembrance of him. Now we know when we celebrate communion today that that's not what saves us, and that's not what Jesus said. He said to do it in remembrance of him. So when we participate in communion by breaking the bread and drinking the juice, we're remembering that God gave us his son to die on the cross so that we could have the gift of life. That's what Easter is all about. And that's what Jesus's mission was when he was on this earth. So I want you just to take a few seconds and think, what does Jesus's gift of life mean to you? When you accept his gift to be a part of his family, what does that mean? To you, does it mean that he's your best friend and that you're never alone? Does it mean that he's going to protect you and take care of you the rest of your life? Does it mean that he will help you whenever you need it? Does it mean that you can talk to him at any time? All you have to do is pray. All of these things are true, but I want you to take just a few seconds and think. Specifically to you, what does that mean that Jesus died on the cross and gave you the gift of life? So whatever this means to you personally, let's take some time to pray together and thank Jesus for giving himself so that we could have the gift of eternal life. Just like I tell you guys in class, I'm going to pray out loud, but make sure that you're talking to Jesus too. You can talk to him out loud or in your head, okay? So let's bow our heads and fold our hands and we're going to pray. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for the gift that you've given us, God. The gift that you came down to earth to live a perfect life, to show us how we can love others and love you, and that you died for us and took our sins on your shoulders so that we could have eternal life, so that we could have a relationship with you when we're here on earth and we could live with you forever in heaven. I just pray that as we prepare for Easter on Sunday, whether we're excited for the activities we're going to get to do at home, or maybe we're a little disappointed because things look different this year, I just pray that you would remind each of one of us, no matter how young we are or how old we are, that the reason we're celebrating is the gift of life that you gave us. And that doesn't change if we're stuck at home and can't have our Easter egg hunts the way we usually do. So I just pray that you would be with each one of us this week, remind us of that, I pray that we would take time each day just to worship you and thank you for your gift. We love you so much. Amen. So I want you guys to think, is there a verse that we've been reading and practicing that reminds us that God gave us eternal life? There is. It's our memory verse. So I'm going to put it nice and big on the screen and we're going to read it together. Make sure you read it out loud with me. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. John 3, 16. I know we practice this verse a lot of silly ways on Sunday, so you can do that again if you'd like jumping up and down, doing jumping jacks, spinning in circles, but make sure you're practicing this and try to memorize it. If you do, send me a video. We want to see it. So just like on Sunday, we have some game and craft ideas that you guys can do at home. For the game, the only supplies you're going to need is a cup, and I would recommend a plastic cup so that it doesn't get broken. So we didn't talk about it specifically in the story we read, but if you read this story in the Bible, um, when the disciples and Jesus passed around the wine to drink, they had a cup that they all shared. So for this first game, you can play who has the cup. So you're going to pick one person from your family to turn around and everyone else is going to line up and you might want to play some music or sing a song so they can't hear. You're going to pick one person to hold the cup behind their back. Then when the guesser turns around, everyone's going to put their arms behind their back, looking like they're holding the cup and they have to guess who has it. So you can find out who the best guesser is in your family. Another way you could play this is you could take turns hiding the cup around the house and see who the best finder is in your family, okay? 
for craft, you guys get to get a little creative. So we saw kind of a picture of the Last Supper in our Bible. You can find a lot of other pictures online. And I want you guys to try to recreate or build or draw this scene on your own, okay? So you could draw it on paper, you could build it out of paper, you could build it out of Play-Doh or blocks or anything else. I know you guys are really creative. So you can make the table, the disciples and Jesus, the bread and wine, okay? And if you do any of these games or crafts, make sure you send us a picture or video. We'd love to see it. I'll also be attaching a Last Supper coloring page with this video. Again, if you're on our website, prairiecentercgp.org. So if you'd prefer just to do a coloring sheet, you can print that out and do it. Last thing I want to tell your family about is how you can access lots of videos and TV shows and movies all about the Bible and God, and that is through a membership through Right Now Media, which you can actually get for free through our church. So again, if you go to our website, prairiecentercgp.org, on the front page you'll see a picture come through that tells you how you can get access to a free account through Right Now Media. I highly recommend that you find a video all about the Easter story that you can watch with your family and just reinforce what you're learning through these lessons. We want to thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope that you're enjoying these lessons. We love and miss you. Have a great week and we'll see you on Easter. Thank you.